For decades, the dream of a winged space plane landing gently on a runway seemed stuck in the past. The U.S. retired its space shuttle fleet in 2011, and since then, capsules like SpaceX's Dragon and Boeing's Starliner have dominated space transportation. But now, a new kind of spacecraft is finally preparing for launch, and it looks very familiar. It's called the Dream Chaser, and it's something entirely different. Built by Sierra Space, this winged vehicle is reusable, it lands like a plane, and it's designed to deliver cargo and experiments to the International Space Station. After years of delays and setbacks, it's finally ready to fly. In this video, we'll break down how Dream Chaser overcame major problems to reach the launch pad, and why it might change the future of spaceflight. But before we dive in, make sure to subscribe if you're interested in more deep dives into the latest space missions and technology. The Dream Chaser is a small, reusable space plane that launches vertically on top of a rocket and returns by gliding to a horizontal landing. This gives it a big advantage. It can land gently on commercial runways, unlike capsule-based spacecraft that crash into the ocean. Dream Chaser's re-entry subjects its cargo to less than 1.5 G-forces, which is ideal for returning sensitive scientific experiments. Sierra Space, which was spun off from Sierra Nevada Corporation in 2021, built the space plane based on NASA's old HL-20 concept. That design dates back to the 1990s and was itself inspired by lifting body research going all the way back to the 1960s. The Dream Chaser carries that legacy into a new commercial era. Originally, the Dream Chaser was designed for carrying astronauts, but that plan hit a major roadblock in 2014. NASA rejected it for the commercial crew program and instead selected Boeing's Starliner and SpaceX's Crew Dragon. NASA said capsules were simpler and safer to develop. This was a serious setback. Sierra Nevada lost out on major funding, filed a protest with the U.S. government, and even had to lay off some of its workforce. Instead of giving up, the team made a smart pivot. In 2015, they unveiled a new version of Dream Chaser designed for cargo only, and this time, it worked. In 2016, NASA selected Dream Chaser for its second round of commercial resupply services, known as CRS-2. The contract promised at least seven cargo missions to the ISS. This was a new lifeline for the program. The cargo version of Dream Chaser includes a detachable module called Shooting Star. It carries unpressurized cargo, solar panels for power, and thrusters for orbital maneuvers. At the end of a mission, Shooting Star burns up in the atmosphere and disposes of trash from the ISS. Meanwhile, the Dream Chaser space plane itself returns safely to Earth with pressurized cargo. Even after securing the contract, development didn't go smoothly. One major problem came early on, in 2013. During a glide test, the prototype's left landing gear failed to deploy. The vehicle skidded off the runway and was damaged. However, the right gear worked perfectly, and flight data showed the software and guidance systems performed as expected. The failure came from a repurposed aircraft part, not part of the final design. Future models would use electric actuators, and a 2017 glide test showed that the issue had been solved. Another big challenge was manufacturing. Dream Chaser's body is made of advanced composite materials, and its thermal protection system uses silica tiles and a high-tech ceramic. These materials are hard to build, test, and certify. The space plane had to meet NASA's strict safety standards, which led to further delays. Sierra Space also faced problems that were completely outside their control, especially from the rocket it needs to launch. Dream Chaser is designed to ride on ULA's new Vulcan Centaur rocket, but Vulcan's development ran late. Its first flight was pushed from 2021 to 2024. Even after Vulcan finally launched in January 2024, Sierra Space had to wait longer. ULA prioritized a military payload for certification, bumping Dream Chaser's launch to a later slot. This meant Dream Chaser missed its ride and had to wait for an open launch window. As of now, the mission is officially scheduled for no earlier than the third quarter of 2025. Some estimates point to September 2025. The first flight, called SSC Demo-1, will lift off from Cape Canaveral on a Vulcan Centaur rocket. It will carry around 3,500 kilograms of cargo to the ISS. Once docked, it's expected to stay for about 45 days. Then, the Shooting Star module will detach and burn up in the atmosphere. Dream Chaser will return on its own, landing on a runway at Kennedy Space Center. 
This is a cargo mission and demonstration of the full system. Sierra Space must prove that Dream Chaser can perform all mission phases safely, launch, orbit, docking, cargo return, and landing. To prepare for this, Sierra Space has done extensive testing. The Dream Chaser and Shooting Star module went through intense vibration testing on the world's most powerful spacecraft shaker. They also completed thermal vacuum testing, with temperatures ranging from negative 150 to plus 300 degrees Fahrenheit to simulate space conditions. One of the most critical tests was called Joint Test 10B. It showed that Dream Chaser could power on, keep its internal cabin cool, and interact with powered payloads like Merck's cryogenic research modules. These are important for carrying sensitive biological and pharmaceutical experiments. In May 2024, Dream Chaser's first flight model, named Tenacity, arrived at Kennedy Space Center. It entered its final phase of pre-launch processing. This includes electromagnetic compatibility tests, acoustic vibration checks, and final installation of the thermal protection system. The vehicle is now fully assembled and being prepared for launch. The upcoming launch marks a major shift for Sierra Space. By offering a reusable space plane with low-G re-entry and runway landings, they are entering a market dominated by capsule spacecraft. Unlike Northrop Grumman's Cygnus, which burns up during re-entry, or SpaceX's Dragon, which splashes into the ocean, Dream Chaser offers fast and direct access to returned cargo, sometimes within 20 minutes of landing. This makes it especially useful for returning delicate materials like medical samples, biological experiments, and advanced research payloads. NASA now has a third option for cargo resupply, making the ISS program more flexible and resilient. But Sierra Space isn't stopping there. They're developing a crewed version called the DC-200, which could carry up to seven astronauts. They're also working on the Life Habitat, an inflatable space station module, and envision Dream Chaser as part of a future space ecosystem with science labs, habitats, and commercial missions in low Earth orbit. There are even discussions about using Dream Chaser for military applications, point-to-point -point delivery of defense payloads, and microgravity research. One example is a cancer research experiment with Merck, planned for the very first mission. This shows the potential of Dream Chaser not just as a delivery vehicle, but as a science platform. All of this is part of Sierra Space's bigger goal, to create a reliable, reusable, and runway landing vehicle that supports space as a service. With its unique design and successful testing, Dream Chaser is now closer than ever to achieving that goal. After years of uncertainty, Sierra Space has proven that setbacks can lead to progress. From landing gear failures to contract losses to rocket delays, the Dream Chaser team has fixed each problem and moved forward. As one innovative spacecraft prepares for its maiden voyage, another continues proving its reliability in orbit. On June 25, 2025, SpaceX launched Axiom Mission 4, AX-4, aboard its Falcon 9 rocket from NASA's Kennedy Space Center. The Crew Dragon capsule, named GRACE, carried four private astronauts, former NASA Commander Peggy Whitson, and three newcomers from India, Poland, and Hungary, on a two-week mission to the International Space Station. After docking the next day, the crew began over 60 microgravity experiments, including research on diabetes and advanced space tech. This mission marked the first ISS visits by astronauts from those three nations, highlighting the growing global and commercial presence in low Earth orbit. Everything from launch to docking went smoothly, reinforcing Crew Dragon's key role in NASA's commercial crew program and expanding the reach of human spaceflight. That was it for today's video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.